Section 3 of the BMAT is one of the sections that you probably won't be as used to as the other ones because it's an essay. And I know what you're thinking, I picked medicine and biology and chemistry because I'm not so great at essays, or I don't like writing that much, or I'm not much of a creative writing person. And that doesn't necessarily have to be true. Section 3 is a chance for you to show a part of your side that you probably won't be showing much in your application, and that's your creativity. Not only your creativity, but your ability to critically analyse a topic that's given to you. And today we're going to talk about how to make that a little bit easier and how to actually have a planned approach to section three. So we'll go through about four or five things that I did five years ago when I sat my BMAP. And um, yeah, hopefully that sounds good. Let's get straight into the video. Right, so I'm actually, I'm a fourth year medical student now at Imperial College London. I have done my BMAP about five years ago now, so I've got a fair amount of practice in it. And I've done some research about how the BMAP's changing and have come to you with an updated approach on tackling section three. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you want to do with section three is to understand that there are three different topics that are going to be given to you. So one of them is going to be medical related, one of them is going to be philosophy related, and one of them is science related. Now that has not changed since I sat my BMAP. And it's good to know this because before you set your BMAT, you might want to think about which topic I'm going to do. And the reason why is that'll help you revision a lot more. So if you want to write a more medical essay, pick the medical question, which should become obvious to you. Now this might center around things like um, ethics of surgery or ethics of blood transfusions in Jehovah's Witnesses, like the NHS in the modern day. Now your science related topics are far more non-clinical. So these are things like lab-based testing on animals, things like robotic surgery, things like using AI in hospitals. They're more scientific and far more technical. So if you want to do that, you can. And the philosophical ones are going to be far more outdated. So they're going to be things like old philosophers like Rene Descartes has been used several times in previous exams, things like Aristotle, or people like William Osler, who one of the first people to talk about medicine in a philosophical sense. So it's really up to you, but try and pick one category that you're more likely to do because then you can revise things like quotations, read up a little bit more about the topics, and that way you're more honed into one particular style. And when you go into the exam, you just pick that question immediately and run with it. So for me, I picked the medicine one. I did a medical essay. I think it was surgery and how we teach it. Um, and I wrote about that. It was really easy because I'd done lots of revision on medicine topics and memorized loads of quotes about medicine that can be applied to pretty much any topic. And that's just something that I recommend you do. Now, when you're analyzing the question, you also want to make sure that you immediately choose whether you agree or disagree the statement. Most of the topics will be an argument. So there'll be something like robotics has a place in surgery. And then you have to decide whether you agree or disagree with the statement. Again, no marks gained or lost for whether you agree or disagree. There's no right answer. The question here is you need to pick a stance and stick with it throughout the essay. And you need to make it absolutely clear which side of the argument you land on throughout the essay. Now this is going to involve some pretty concise planning. I say concise because section three is obviously only half an hour long, so you've not got long. I would say around five minutes to plan it, literally just jot down a couple of key points for each body of the paragraph and move on to writing because you haven't got long. Half an hour for one A4 side sounds like a long time, it's really not. So make sure you plan it really quickly, really simply, and get right into creating the essay itself. Now the introduction should be the first thing you talk about, and most people will start off with a little bit of a dissection of the initial statement. So you'll get the statement that's given to you in the BMAT, and what most people do is they spend the first paragraph, literally just one line, that's it, they basically explain that statement again. And what that does is it sets up your essay for a nice opening, it basically relays to the examiner that you understand exactly what the statement means, and it's just an easy way to start your essay. You don't have to think about a hook or a catchy phrase. If you've got a quotation or something quite catchy that you want to start the essay off with, you can. But like me, I just chose to start off by re-explaining the statement, dissecting it, basically telling the examiner what the statement was and what it meant by that. I would do that in literally one line and then get on with the rest of my essay. Now moving on, you want to initially make sure that you've planned that you've got three paragraphs at least. First one, which is your introduction. Second, which is your body. And third, which is the conclusion slash the opposite argument. Let's say you agree with robotics and surgery. You think they're great. They have a place in surgery in the future. Fine. Your first paragraph should just be an introduction. Basically saying what the statement is, explaining it a bit more, maybe a quote in there if you want. Then quickly saying, and I agree with this statement or and this is something that I take to be correct or true. So that just tells the examiner you understand the statement and that you agree with it. That's it. Now your second paragraph should be all about you explaining why you think it's true. So give a few points, literally 
three points is enough and that can include quotations you know anecdotes just focus on the pros so why you agree with it then the third paragraph is going to be a mix of two things number one the opposite argument so even though you think that robotics has a place in it you do need to mention that some people will be opposed to it and why just so it shows the examiner you acknowledge that there are people who will disagree with you and then on the same paragraph you conclude you finish off by saying, despite all these arguments, I still believe that robotics has a place in medicine or surgery because of X, Y, Z. And then you finish off with that. So there are three paragraphs in total. And that is literally all that you need to do in the essay. No more than three paragraphs, one for the introduction, one for your argument, and one for the opposite argument and conclusion. And that's really the structure that you need for the BMAT. And that just keeps things simple because you've only got the A4 paper. You can't get an additional piece of paper at all. Even if you make a mistake, you can't cross out and go to the next line. That's not worth it. So you just need a really simple structure. That's the one I used. I felt that it worked fine for me and it got me done within 20 minutes. So that's a really easy way to do this. That's really everything you need to know. A couple of final things are to maintain that structure and try it out for a few past papers. Pick some topics that are obviously the ones that you want to do. So if you want to do the surgical question, pick the surgical questions from 2015, 2016, 2017, have a go at them. Memorize some quotes. Quotations are really helpful, especially if you don't have much to say. Just stick a good quote in there. I always memorize generic quotes. So these are things that can be applied to any topic whatsoever. So don't memorize really specified quotes. Learn some quite generic ones that you can apply to any kind of topic. And that's just helpful because it cuts down the amount that you have to memorize. So that's everything that I've got to say. Hopefully that's alleviated some of your concerns. Maybe if you've got any other questions, you can drop them in the comments down below. Contact me on Instagram. But apart from that, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next video.